So a lot of things in the code base now are structured correctly and have gotten a detail pass. But one part that is more new and hasn't had a detail pass yet is the multi-window support. That was brand new two videos ago, and then the previous video was debugging, so I haven't actually gone through and done a cleanup pass on the details of multi-window. In particular, there are actually issues that I know about. The OpenGL multi-window support doesn't share a context yet, so I want to clean up how that's working. And I also want to do a pass and just test out using multiple windows for OpenGL simultaneously, multiple windows for D3D simultaneously, having them getting destroyed, all of that in one go. So that's what we're gonna do today. When I went to go test the OpenGL multi-window situation, I realized my examples are not quite as simplified as they could be. They were originally written in the way that they're written to become sort of a template for copy-pasting into the code base. At the time, that was a useful thing to do, but in the long run, what I want these examples to do is to be as simple as possible. So I want to take out the more carefully massaged error handling and the splitting things up into functions and simplify this all the way back down to the smallest example that sort of fits in one main function with oversimplified exit on error kind of error handling and all of that stuff again, because that will be the sort of most useful play space for experimenting with details like what I'm trying to do with the multi-window OpenGL stuff here. So since I noticed that the example wasn't exactly ideal for this experiment, before I go and do the main experiment I need to do for OpenGL window support, I'm just doing a pass over both of the examples to get them into their permanent long-term simplified state. Okay, now my example is nice and simple, and so I'm gonna run this experiment. So when going to create multiple windows with OpenGL, what I didn't do was think about what I would do with the OpenGL context. I'm just creating a new OpenGL context for each window, but that's gonna to lead to each window having to have its own copy of all of the resources right now. Now, one way you can solve this, and what, you will, what will come up if you try to say, look for how to share resources between contexts, is that there is in fact a mechanism for creating one context that will then have its resources shared with another context. And so what we could do is create one main context and have each window create a separate context that shares resources with that sort of main central, aka dummy uh, context or something like that. So doing all of that would work, and I've done it that way in the past, but I discovered it's actually possible to do it in a much simpler way thanks to this example from Martin's Mosaico. So what he shows is that you can create just one OpenGL context, and whenever you go to render to a window, you make that context current with that window instead of having a separate context for each window. Either way, you have to call make current, which is the, you know, the wiggle make current API makes a particular context current on the current thread. And then all the GL calls go through that context. But if you are going to call wiggle make current anyways, and you are calling it with the same context every time instead of a different context every time, then the only difference is you're calling it with a different window, right? So I can actually use the same context and just make it current with different windows throughout the frame and then render all the windows that way. So that's the way we're going to set it up because it means it's even simpler. So here I am just testing that out, making sure that I can implement it and get the right behavior from it. And that's why it's all going into the example. Once I see it working in the example, I will transfer all of that over into the main code. All right, so it all worked in the example without too much hassle. So now I'm gonna try and do the same thing in the main code code. 
The only thing I have to do here is rearrange what I already have because I already have multi-window stuff happening. The one detail that's important is you still have to set the pixel format on each window. So even though I don't have to create the context anymore on each window, before I go and try to render to that window, I need to make sure that its pixel format has been set to match the pixel format used for creating the original context. This also means I need a dummy window at the beginning of the program because if I am done bootstrapping, then I don't have a real window yet, but I want to create the graphics context because I would rather create the graphics context during that initialization phase and make sure it works rather than delaying and making the graphics context when the first window gets created and then trying to keep it around for forever after that or something more complicated like that. I want to make sure this just happens in the init path. And then I can also do some other things to clean things up. Up until now, I've loaded all of the OpenGL windows the first time I created a full graphics context. Because remember, my bootstrap context can't actually load uh, the modern OpenGL functions. But now I'm creating my graphics context during the init path so I can get all of the GL functions loaded during the init path too. And this is great because now I will know for sure when I call init and it succeeds that I got the entire thing to load successfully. Previously, I had to sort of wait until I created the first window to really be sure that everything loaded the way I thought it would. So with that, I can clean all of those details up. We create a dummy window and use that dummy window to create the real OpenGL context. The dummy window will never get shown. It's just sort of sitting there as a node in a system that allows the graphics context to get created. And then the real windows that I actually display with will just use the context that I made off of the dummy window. Next, I want to exercise the multi-window capacity of the code base a little bit more directly. So far, I've tested it with one OpenGL window and one Direct3D window, but now I want to test it with multiple OpenGL windows and multiple Direct3D windows and make sure I can destroy both of them, both of the types of windows, that is. So here I'm just building out some more usage code in main to exercise this new stuff. So that gets us through most of the big stuff I wanted to do today. I'm going to now sneak in a quick cleanup on some of the D3D code. So when I first wrote it, I wrote a lot of things in a way where I create objects up front and hold on to them for as long as possible. And looking at other people's D3D code, I realized that some of the objects in this API don't need to be held onto forever. It's actually better to create them when you need them and then release them again, and therefore only hold on to the few handles that actually require continuity and let the others be something you don't have to consistently manage the memory for or whatever, right? So that's what I'm going to do here by just applying that to the factory. With this, we've made a lot of progress, but there are still some more small details that we can handle that are operating system specific API agnostic features. So that's what we'll be getting to next time. See you then.